food tech founders, I have somebody for you. And he was right. She's a phenomenal, phenomenal, unique person. The first time I ever spoke to her on a video call, she was sitting in a cave. <laughs> and it was just, I was like, are you, what's in your background? Is that real? So she's just a unique character that I hope you all get to speak to tonight. But come on up and tell them about upwelling for starters.
credits and results much faster um, than if that wasn't the case. Um, our funding model is mixed right now. So we're looking at nonprofit funding for um, ecosystem restoration, moving into commercial applications with traditional investment. And we're starting with um, initial contracts with governments and businesses that are already heavily investing in um, ecosystem restoration. Sadly and frankly, <laughs> with not the best performance results. Um, so a lot of those are looking for other options. Um, and we're gonna take traditional investment um, after we do our initial um, pilot with the reef restoration and start developing into aquaculture, mariculture, and fisheries um, services. And those are the established markets. There are a lot of emerging markets coming online. Um, one of the most exciting ones for us is the EU nature restoration law, where 20% of degraded European habitats have to be restored. Um, this is brand new, a lot of money is going into it. There's also biodiversity credits, carbon credits, which everyone's probably heard of, and um, corporate and government um, sustainability targets. This is very small and hard for you guys to read, but our, um, our total addressable market size is about at 1 billion annually, uh, about 200 million um, serviceable, and these numbers are all projected to increase hugely um, in the coming years. And because our option, um, our solution is kind of the only game in town for mitigating local climate effects on the marine ecosystems, we actually think we can get a significant chunk of this and make it attainable. So um, our projected revenue, our devices are very inexpensive, first of all, about $50,000 per device. So it's affordable for almost any scale of operation. Um, and we're starting with three upwellers for coral reef restoration use cases. We already have the clients ready to go following the pilot study, and we're going to invest the philanthropic funding into restoration R&D, and then grow into the commercial applications from there. And using a mix of these different applications, we're trying to get to 150 upwellers by year five, which is, we actually think, quite conservative and mostly constrained by um, scaling logistics and funding, um, and we think we can get to around $5 million by year five. Um, I took a little life detour during COVID and started working on um, underwater vehicles and habitats and um, in engineering and operations. And I, of course, had no idea how that was gonna fit into my uh, career as a marine ecologist. And it just turned out to be perfect. It brought me to the best underwater engineers on the planet and also um, helped me round out my experience um, with dealing with the challenges of uh, in the field um, operations with underwater tech, which is very difficult. And everyone on the team is at the very top of their field. I'm so proud to be able to work with them and co-create this with them. So, yeah, I just want to close by saying, you know, I'm a marine scientist. This is by far the most promising technology I've ever come across in my career. And if you're excited by it, please get in touch. I would love to hear from you. What we need right now is um, 25K in match donations to match 25K we raised last week. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> For the Coral Reef Pilot Study and about 150K in um, Seed investment, anything over 50k will get matched with 150k. We need about 300 total to be able to do the um, industrial application R&D, and we're also looking for um, government and NGO partners for ecosystem restoration for the pilot studies and prospect prospective clients that are doing any kind of marine organism um, farming or cultivation. And yeah, uh, also. If you feel inspired to make a donation, we do have a crowdfunding campaign live um, that you can access with the QR code. All right, we have time for like one question. We're gonna we're gonna be a little more rapid because we are definitely running a little behind. Sorry. Sorry, no. We this always happens. Spoiler. <laughs> Too many good things. Go ahead. Just out of curiosity, is there a minimum requirement of depth that you need for the upwelling to take place? And if so, does the does Florida have that depth? For you to be able to pilot something here. 
That's a great question. Um, so what we need, it's not necessarily depth related. We try to aim for 50 to 100 meters. So Florida is very challenging. Um, I think there are some places in the Keys where we can reach that depth, but basically we need to get below a thermocline that's at least 1.5 degrees C colder than the surface. Um, ideally two, but that as a minimum, and that's also challenging for Florida. So we would need to assess site by site to see if it's possible at all. Um, basically, we need, we need a reef slope. We can't do you know big lagoonal reefs or shelves. Right. Thank you, Janine. We'll, we'll have more time for questions after we have a whole other.